like who we are, uh, why we want to talk about redemption on YouTube, why you should pay attention to us, other than the fact that we're really hilarious and we tell a lot of inside jokes on our on our shows and games. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to start, Westy, or should I? Um, you can go ahead. Okay. Well, I've been playing Redemption for almost. Oh crap! I don't even know how long. Uh, what years? <laughs> I do this every time too. <laughs> like, it's been nine years because I started. Nine years. Whichever year that the national tournament was in Pittsburgh, which I believe was 2003, so that would make this ten years now. This would it's be 2003 my... or 2004. I think it was 2003. Okay. Um, so that means I've been playing Redemption for ten years as of October 2013. Uh, the national tournament that year was actually held at my school which is how I found out that Redemption existed. Um, Mike Birkenpass was a teacher at the school, and he was pretty involved with the reg for a while. Now he is not, no longer active in the community. but Pretty involved. He wrote the reg. Yeah, he basically wrote the reg. I'm not saying that I'm awesome, but the guy taught me, who taught me the game also wrote the reg. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but however, I'm really bad with rulings, and... As has been shown, if you're following the Redemption metagaming thread, I've already incorrectly stated two rulings, and supposedly I'm supposed to be an expert on the game, but whatever. See, I tried to play it right. You made me play it wrong. It happens, you know, it happens. But uh, so anyway, so I've been playing for 10 years now. Um, didn't really get too, too into the competitive side of Redemption for a while. I just sort of, because I started when I was in sixth grade, so I wasn't really capable of sort of getting into, like, big-time redemption. I was just sort of, like, playing around with my friends, and I would go to, like, district tournaments that were in our area and that Mike hosted. But uh, after a while, when I, I would say probably when I got into 10th or 11th grade, I started to get a little bit more serious into it. Um, uh, this style of games always appealed to me. I thought I think I have a mind for it. I'm interested in it, so I just... Started to get a little more serious. I ended up finding the forums online, which I believe back then were on the easy boards. I was on there for like oh, yeah. two months. And then, then they switched over to the, this weird SMF thing we have now, whatever it's called. But So I was playing that for a while. Uh, went to my first national tournament in 2008. Played a really awesome rogue deck. It was an Eli Shama Placers-based deck, which I okay. sort of shamelessly stole from Lamborghini Diablo on the boards. But uh, no, he actually he played the deck against me a lot on RTS. I thought it was really good. I played my own version of it. Um, I actually got I placed second at Northeast Regionals that year, so I thought it was really awesome. Uh, there were like 20 people at that regional, so it actually wasn't that awesome. It was I mean like it was it was good. It was a national tournament worthy. Um, so after that, I got to my nationals. Thought it was really awesome. Met a lot of people like Gabe that I'd been playing online a lot. Thought he was awesome, so I kept playing, kept at it. Um, started putting a little bit more time into it. Missed regionals or missed nationals in 2009 because it was in California, and that's really far away. And I didn't have the money as a high school junior to fly to California from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I went again in 2010 to Boston. I again played a rogue deck, and it was again shamelessly stolen from another deck builder. <laughs> uh, this time it was Kirk Dennison. I played him in a game at Midwestern Regionals. Had I don't even really know what to call the deck. Um, it was just it was basically just defense heavy, and then it used Generous Widow to outmill a hand, so that eventually the opponent had no hand at the end of a game. It like it had totally destroyed it at Regionals. Thought it was great. I did a less than great job at rebuilding it for Nationals based on my memory. Uh, I did really bad that tournament. I'm not proud of it at all. And I played terribly. Oh, I guess I should know. Like, I'm I'm talking about type one two player this whole entire time for the record. Uh, there's a couple different formats for redemption. I pretty much only play type one two player in any competitive manner for a, a number of reasons. But not even sort of booster much. draft. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then, so 2010, 2011 was Minnesota. Um, this was year. the point where like I'd finally sort of reached my I would say my apex where I've been I'd finally like, sort of like realized that I'm 
for my first couple of nationals, I wanted to play defense heavy rogues mostly to be different because I wanted to. You wanted well, to play a defense heavy rogue in 2011 too. It was like one I, I week did. before that you decided to switch. I um, I sort of made the realization that I w- probably wasn't going to win a national tournament with a defense heavy rogue, and I'm sure we're going to cover that fairly extensively at some <laughs> point in this in this show. Um, so I decided to play speed deck because speed decks are really good, and they've been winning tournaments for like the past seven years. Uh, it was a garden tomb deck, which was incredibly innovative for the time. I'm sure. <laughs> Everyone well, was shocked it, it was a play. different garden tomb deck. Like, it was a little you, different. It used the game like combo. Um, like that. Yeah, it actually, it, yeah, it had a musician, musician backup, but I mean, overall, it was pretty standard. Nothing special. I placed seventh place. Um, no, no, I placed ninth place. I placed ninth place. I lied. Still top ten. Um, yeah, top ten, which is sort of like the number most people are going for when they get to Nats there. Yeah, Minnesota, kinda, that's that's pretty good. In Minnesota, like it was one of the bigger tournaments in recent memory. So, I, mean, I was definitely very proud of my placing. Um, lost the game on draw that I probably could have won. I was pissed about that one. Um, Who was that against? What's his name? It was one of Randall's players. Um, okay. It was second, Brett. Brett Nyford. Okay. It was a it was a TGT mirror. Lost totally on draw. Uh, lost to John Nesfeder. Lost to John Nesfeder totally on draw. Again, because I was playing a speed deck, like I can't really be mad about it, but I was. Right. Um, and then last year, Nationals was in Tennessee. Um, played a speed deck, known as the deck. If you're familiar with it. Um, you're welcome. Placed. <clears throat> yeah, again, shamelessly stolen from Andrew Wester. Which was also early. shamelessly stolen Yeah, I mean, I guess really what James I'm saying right now is I, I really just, like, I steal a lot of deck ideas, and then I play them, and I'm like, I'm okay, I'm good enough to play them. Um, I'm kind of... Often, whenever I'm deck building, I tend to forget common staple cards. Uh, I have a habit of forgetting to put dominance in first drafts of decks. Uh, so maybe I'm not as good as I would like to think, but I'm working on it. Uh, but yeah, I played seventh last year, tied for seventh. Chris Erickson would like me to clarify that for you guys that we we actually tied, and we tied with the third person, uh, Josh Brinkman, and we were actually in a three-way triangle. About we each of us had beaten one of the other persons and lost to the other, so we we were in a pure tie for for seventh. Um, I think that's that's about it about redemption for me. No, no, like. Oh, okay. I guess also I am a national champion of redemption in the booster draft category as of 2012 nationals. Um, I had a I had a really interesting draft. We actually had to randomize the tables twice because of some sort of error in the first randomization, or they didn't have a player in the the playing pool or something. I don't really remember. For some reason, they had to do it a second time, and I actually got seated at the same seat for both randomizations. Which, I mean, at the time, I was like, wow, that's, like, kind of weird, and maybe that's a sign. It turns out it was a sign, because I opened a falling away in my wounds pack. Um, so it's a good way to start? <laughs> yeah, I played, I played a pretty... I had a pretty strong defense. I had, like, a writ, falling away, um, four battle-winning brown enhancements. None of them were Heyman's plot, though, unfortunately. Um... Uh, the deck is posted online on the forums if you'd like to take a gander at a booster draft deck. It's under National Tournament Winning Decks, actually. I believe there might be a report with that also. I don't really remember. Um, but yeah, I guess... It, I mean, I, I, I try to f- keep up with the meta online, um, see what other top players are playing. Uh, I also like to try to put my own spin on what other top players are playing. A lot of times that's really bad, and it turns out poorly, but I think it's also given me maybe a different perspective, and I hope to bring that to you guys on the show. I, mean, I think all that right. covers it. What That's all you now, was to Okay, on, well, on I, uh, I started, I think it was 2002 is actually when <coughs> I learned. Um, my dad was college friends with Bill Voigt, and they um, reconnected, and Bill kind of mentioned that him and his son, Nathan, um, really enjoyed doing this together, and so Dad was like, well, maybe it's something we would enjoy. Um, so Bill came down and uh, did one of his, his legendary mini camps um, at our church. So um, I'd kind of collected a little bit before just buying a pack at the Christian bookstore, 
um, where Bainey actually held supplies, Chris Bainey. Um, and so, yeah, then I, uh, I learned in 2002, didn't really play too much. Um, my first tournament was actually in 2004, I believe, at a regional tournament. And um, I actually got all the way to play for third place. I basically just copied Nathan Voigt's offense and used my own defense. Like, he was running basically a transfiguration offense, and um, I was running uh, white and silver, I think. So I, I still held a lot of the same cards. He went more with purple and um, using, like, Reach Desperation Prosperity, the common speed things back then. But um, that tournament, yeah, I was playing for third place, and I was um, really kind of like, whoa, maybe, you know, I can do this. So that gave me a lot of courage. And Nathan actually won that tournament. Um, he ended up beating Tim Molly for the win, which he was really excited. And wow. Like, I always He's never him. heard those two names at a top table before. Right. Well, at <laughs> that really time, bad. like Nathan, he he wasn't what he what he is now, and so like I always had him as this like godlike player, and then he won, and it just like affirmed my my beliefs um, that he was like the best player ever. And I thought King of Tyrus was the dumbest card ever. It's like no. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then uh, first nationals was Minnesota in 2005, um, and I've actually been to every nationals since then except for California. So uh, seven, eight, eight nationals, seven, seven. So nationals. just about 2005, yeah, seven. Um, yeah, so um, didn't really play competitively though. I mean, I would go to bigger tournaments. Um, it wasn't until I won um, Iowa State that I, I really started to um, get into the competitive scene and start looking at what decks are good. Um, in 2008, when I went to Ohio, um, I played a... Um, actually, rewinding to my Iowa State's win, my first real win, um, I ended up... That was like Gabe Isabel's first state tournament. And oh, I wow. Playing, a titan. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, he was just playing, like, a five-by-the-numbers deck. Like, I think he had switched over from Magic the Gathering, and he was like, well, I don't know what cards do yet, but I hear this deck is good, and I don't have to worry about it. And I was still running white, and uh, I, I think I had switched to purple at that point. So I just had, like, Transfiguration and Authority of Christ and a, a bunch of stuff that was just cannot be negated, and he couldn't do anything about it. But Tim Molly was griping, and it was like, oh, I just wish somebody would beat that Gabe, whoever he is. And, and I was like, oh, I'd beat him, and then he ended up winning Nationals, you know, like... Um, no, they, that did he year, win Nationals actually. his first competitive year? Uh, it might have been a year after, because it was Kansas City okay. that he won first, wasn't it? Right, yeah. I mean, I was just wondering yeah. if we should worship at his feet any more than we already currently do, <laughs> but... I don't know, I'm yeah, just so <laughs> I, I fiddled guy. around a lot in those years with the psych decks um, were kind of my go-to. I really like the defensive and locking your opponent out, and... Um, mm -hmm. 2008, I switched over to the speed, played five by the numbers, and um, didn't really do well at nationals. Um, I went like 500, I think. And I also brought a huh. sight lock, and I, I switched. Yeah. I also played yeah. a sight lock, and I also nice. did better than you did. That was that was <laughs> the first year though that like I really started to hang out with people. Um, yeah. I I guess New York, I, I did do a lot of hanging out with the TKP. Um, the crazy people back in the day, and like <laughs> I was on the easy boards, and I was the the little kid who didn't know what spam was, and so I just like spam up all the threads. Mm -hmm. And looking back, it was terrible. But yeah, I went through um, that. That's how I got to know everybody. Is I, I just kind of played Settlers of Catan with Kirk, and um, I believe Josh Cop was playing that game, and it, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, um, just keep going. To nationals kept meeting people and becoming a better player. Um, 2010, um, I took um, Alan Rice's uh, TGT deck um, to the Boston Nationals, and um, that one I got like 22nd, but um, that was the I first one that I kind of... of 66. <laughs> I remember that because it was exactly in the middle. Okay. See, I remember That's... it because I was actually in the top third, and Randall was 44th because he was exactly in the other third. Remember oh, that yeah. Randall, he was quite, quite the interesting character. Oh, yes. Uh, but that was the first year that I really wanted to do well. I got to the top table, played Martin Miller, and um, <laughs> lost to him. <laughs> National champion, Martin Miller. Yep. 
but that year was the year of the um, combo, 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 Congo. So I just had a lot of fun that year. I got fourth place I mean, in teams. Perhaps you should explain that a little bit because that's a bit. I'm I think that's not going to explain it. What? Um, I'm not going to explain it. Maybe we'll do a video okay. on like I mean, legendary I think combos really, later. The really short explanation of point of that is he was going to rescue seven souls without in, taking a turn in type two if he successfully yeah. pulled off the combo, which well, happened I believe half the time. Well, I do it in teams too. In teams, uh, a third of the okay. time. What was like in teams? It happened off, what, a lot 50, more often. Fifty percent of the time. Teams fifty percent. Um, in okay. type two is a thirty-three percent. Okay, I mean so. that's not not the worst. I mean, it's yeah. no, it's no Matt Brinkman performance, that's for sure. So, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I was wondering why you weren't laughing at that. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> so, anyway, um, 2011 uh, Nationals, I I went in with this turtle deck. I It was more for teams. Like, I, I looked at Tyler Stevens' yep. deck um, from 2010 that got third place, actually. And I was like, oh, this looks mm -hmm. like a really fun deck. I wanted to try the, you know, like 150 card team stack and the 50 <laughs> card team stack. Uh, I love mm -hmm. teams. Teams teams was like my first real competitive category. Um, mm -hmm. Just because, like, the first time I played it, we won the tournament against a bunch of RLKs paired with, like, Titans. Was like, that you and Alan? Yeah. We, we just put together also decks and, like, Kevin. I found all sauce. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Kind of infamous on the forums. Also, potentially, if you were around for a while, he was known as not a troll. You might be familiar <laughs> with that. Along with Ring Rolf, <laughs> um, New Raven trying to change 13, or like 13R, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he did a, yes. lot of, a lot of trolling. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so 2011, I, I basically just shrunk down my um, team stack for Type 1, and I've been playing it a lot, and um, again with the, the Sight Lock theme that I've been playing, you know, forever, um, kind of my roots are in Sight Lock, I, I just wanted to lock my opponent out and then go in for Free Souls and uh, end up getting third place in Type 1 2-player, so... It was a, a very surprising turnout for me. Um, at the beginning, I I didn't think I had a shot. So like, I. Uh, what are you talking about? We talked about. <gasps> well, we like I did, but I did and I didn't. Like I didn't. Yeah. I was really hoping it would do well, but I, I, mean, I didn't think it actually would. Because I mean, it's yeah. a turtle deck. It was piloted by a terrible player. It's or, hard to like, go into I a, a one hundred so person time. tournament and expect to win anything too. Like you don't want to go in with. Right. Too high of expectations, because then you're just really setting Especially yourself up to have a, a terrible deck. deck. With what? Um, but it's such a, a weird rogue deck. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, something so far out of the normal. But, um, yeah, I got third, and I got a second in booster draft that year. I was going for first, but I can't top you. Um, yeah, I'm sort of better at booster good enough. draft than you are. Actually, Clearly. For, for the record, I should go ahead and... I'm actually officially retired from booster draft because I figure I'm never <laughs> gonna ever win a, a tournament like nationals again in such a skill-based category. <laughs> so instead, I'm gonna be playing some of the multiplayer categories. Probably, I think it's usually paired against type two multi, so I'll probably just borrow a deck or something. But yeah, I'm definitely okay. not playing booster draft ever again. I would judge before I played booster draft. Uh, anyway, um, and that year I also got uh, second in teams. Um, losing only to the legendary Dave Isbell and Kevin Schreid. Um Yeah. Um, I, I believe I got second or third in RNRS too that year. Um, Nathan Boyd yeah. taking first and stealing it away. But, um, yeah, so that was a huge year for me, and um, that's when I decided, you know, like, I, I really wanted to get competitive. I'd never really done games like these before, strategy games, trading card games. You know, I... I looked at Pokemon cards. I didn't know how to play. Um, I never even, like, tried to play. I just looked at them. Um, but during this time, you know, I started to get into Settlers of Catan. Um, I remember playing Cutthroat Caverns in 2008 Nationals until, like, 4 a.m. in the morning. And uh, Martin Miller was working on his royalty deck, which he thought was going to be so good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun over the years. Uh, I suppose I should tell about last year. Last year, um, yeah. I got sick and tired of losing to Jane Robke's deck, which was basically just based around Angel Under the Oak. 
Uh, yeah, we should really give him more forums. props. Yeah, he like, like James is a genius deck builder. Uh, there goes my lights. Oh yeah, Wesley lives in a kind of a crappy dorm where the lights are based upon motion. And so just... since his bed is like seven feet in the air, <laughs> he doesn't trigger the motion, and so sometimes the lights just randomly shut off on him. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about James Rookie though, because he's really good at this game, and no one knows who he is outside of Minnesota players and sort of that North Central region. Um, I don't think does James have any notable titles other than Kings Regionals. Um, I believe he's placed in Type Two at Nationals. Okay. Okay. Um, he's I mean, more of a way. Type Two player than a Type One player. He always seems to use profits too. He has a yeah. weird affinity for profits. But um, I mean, regardless, he's incredibly good. And if you've at all heard of the deck over the last year and a half, it's actually James Ropey's brainchild. Yeah, or maybe I mean, John Early was involved. I would say John Early's involved with it, but I don't want to give John Early oh, yeah. any credit whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, they, those Love two, you, I would say, are the single best playtesters because, I mean, they just sit down and they can play games over and over with multiple different decks. And um, I've actually started to try to do that a little bit this year. Yeah, I don't have the patience um, to do that. <laughs> That's so, why my deck so is with good. Pokemon than Redemption. Like, yeah, I play a lot. Yeah. But that, I mean, this guess, isn't yeah. about that. Uh, I mean, we can talk a little. We can talk a little bit, maybe about how we connected. Like I think, I think um, we started hanging out a little bit at Boston. It was one of the first time I really remember hanging out with you. Um, that could be. I always admired you. Like I would see your um, posts on open discussion and stuff, and I'd be like, I yeah, like this I'm guy. He knows what he talks. He's talking about. Yeah, back in the Colin days. Oh yeah. But uh, I always like Colin too. Not like I wouldn't agree with him. Like I generally agree with you. But I always thought Colin had interesting thoughts. So that's true. De- well, Colin definitely made me. Now think. this show is getting banned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he probably deserved that. Let's be honest. But uh, oh yeah, he I, totally I, did. We started hanging out at, a bit in Boston. Uh, yep. And then whenever, at some point, I think we started just discussing deck ideas on PMs and stuff on the forums. Uh, so yeah, I would I say like ever since the, probably about like a little bit before. Before, uh, between Boston and Minnesota Nationals, at some point in there, we sort of connected as, like, deck buddies or deck building discussion buddies or something. Uh, So we've been sort of sharing deck ideas and concepts with each other since then, lists. uh, I mean, I guess guess we're on the same team, as Pokemon would put it, for redemption. um, Team Go. Yeah, so we... We play test a little bit together now that Westy has RTS on his Mac, which yeah. for, for those of you out there on Macs, he actually does have RTS working without boot camp. He didn't bother I, to tell anyone. I can't so figure RTS out how does, to do it. RTS does work on Macs for all of you guys out there who have a Mac and think you can't play. That's not true. Westy did it, and I saw it with my own eyes, so <laughs> you can believe yeah, it. I, I converted it through Wine. Um, I tried to do a tutorial one time of how to do it and I couldn't figure out how to do it again. But if you do enough Googling, you'll find a way. <laughs> uh, you can pretty much do that with anything. Yeah. yeah. I might have used the crossover demo and uh, converted okay. it to a Windows or to a Mac file with that, but um, I don't okay. remember. So. Yeah, um, we built two different decks together for Minnesota Nationals. There was Sort of the defense-heavy deck that Andrew Wester ended up placing second with. Third. Uh, third. Okay, he placed third with it, whatever. Um, that's right, John Early was second, because he got second two straight years. Yeah, and I screwed him out of first <laughs> with bad playing. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I could have won two games that I tied, which would have resulted in a three-way tie, which would have resulted in old, um, early winning. But Yeah, John takes the cake there. I screwed up. Yeah, Sorry, I, mean, I, I played the same, pretty much the same defensive deck that you played. You I played it, though. I played it regionally. Why your little bit, would have worked. Yeah, a little bit different spin. I thought it was a little better. You thought it was a little worse. I mean, we have disagreements. It happens. But I ended up not playing. I played the speed deck mostly, like I talked about. Um, then last year we we played teams together, so we built our own version of the deck, and then we started playtesting, and we realized. Realized, holy crap, this deck is just really good in general, and not even in just type one two player. 
So we build our own lists of that together. Uh, again, has some disagreements. I still swear by Bendigo. I think he's a great addition to that deck, but Westy completely disagrees. <laughs> so bad. Like, that's that not teal. No. I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, but which just it just goes to show you that even players who I would like to think are fairly good, and like we've been down a lot of speed with this before, like we still come to a lot of disagreement on what exactly we should put in our decks. So yeah, there's, there's a lot a, of one or two like cards three. things that make a big difference. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot really. of players disagree with. Yeah, I mean, I think there's probably definitely an ideal best list out there, but I don't know if anyone can actually say that they have it. So right. There's a lot of room for your own little tweaks. I, mean, I, guess, yeah. I guess that about covers who we are. Um, I don't know what's next, like a little bit about, I guess we need to tell um, people like why we're doing this. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess that means we need to talk about Pokemon. Is that banned or something? No, no, I think that's, I'm, I think that's true. I, mean, I think that makes sense. Point. Okay, well, but, anyway, okay, I mean, so. It, it did play a lot into starting this show. Yeah, it was a very important In part. fact, it's, this show is very based around Pokemon, but. Yeah, just yeah, that's explain. Right. Okay. I, I've been talking for the past right. half an hour. Sure, we'll trade. Um, basically, like last December, I got a message from Westy on Facebook. Said he was starting to look at Pokemon a little bit, and uh, I was like, "Why are you? Why are you playing Pokemon? Like it's dumb. <laughs> Pokemon's for children." <laughs> um, but it turns out you That's can actually win. You can actually okay. win a lot of scholarship money playing Pokemon, as it turns out. <laughs> and so Wesley thought yeah. that was cool. So I was like, you know, like whatever. <laughs> like I'll pick up. I like I like playing card games. Like I'll pick up Pokemon with you and play a little bit online. There's a free simulator just like RTS. It's a little bit more functional because it's in browser. But I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm happy. It, it's still anything. the same, like drag and drop and yeah. having to announce stuff. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But um. Pretty basic. It's nice that it's in browser, but I mean, RTS is oh, a yeah. great function. I'm really glad we have it. Um, we started playing Pokemon, and we don't really do anything halfway, so we got into the meta a lot. We joined a couple forums. We're, we're pretty active on one of them now. It's a pretty... We'll just say the community is a little bit more toxic than the Redemption <laughs> community is probably the best way to put it, but we, put, we try to put <laughs> so up with toxic. it. And, and we just try to maybe like be a little bit of a better influence in there because I think we're, I, mean, I think we both love Jesus, and I think that's one of the things that Redemption is kind of cool with that you can like read Bible verses on your cards. That's pretty neat. Um, but again, like part we're, of the reason we're, why we're, I know Shamgar. <laughs> we're competitive though. We don't do anything halfway, so uh, we jumped right into the meta. Um, went to a couple state tournaments. Westy actually top cut at two of them, so he actually has. Ranking points and stuff for Pokemon already. He's pretty good. Um, I mean, I think we're both definitely above average players at this point, but I don't have any results to prove that other than his top cuts. Um, then just two weeks ago, we went, or is it one week ago? It was one week ago. Uh, was it was last week. We week. went to, wow. yeah, we went to Atlanta together for a regional tournament. Uh, again, we just sort of went all in on Pokemon. Uh, but anyway, the important part is one of the reasons we were able to get up to speed so quickly on uh, the meta and good cards and sort of like competitive strategy was a, a site called the thetopcut.net. And it's just a collection of five, five players who just put together uh, different game content and commentaries. Uh, they've also put on like a live stream sporadically to talk about the meta and sort of where they think the best plays are. They post deck lists a lot, have a lot of games posted, and we just we spent a lot of time watching them, uh, just sort of seeing what different players were doing and what what some good decks were, maybe some good techs in popular decks to sort of help counter the the meta and stuff. And uh, since we were we drove from Nashville to Atlanta, so we had like ten hours of drive time just sort of like talk about whatever and uh, we sort of thought maybe there's been some some talk of potentially being able to record games at nationals this year which are in New York and uh, I said I actually volunteered to commentate them if that occurs so, so Alec Joy if you're watching this please make sure that occurs so that I can commentate <laughs> them 
Um, but yeah, we just thought it would be kind of cool to do what the Top Guts doing for Pokemon, just do that for Redemption. And so yeah. here we are trying to do that. <laughs> and it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy road while we try to figure out the best ways to to get stuff online for you guys and to give you content. Um, one thing we can definitely probably do pretty quickly, though, is give you some RTS games and some lists of popular decks. Um, and this is this is going to be a bit of a personal rant for a second, but um, <laughs> we're, we're probably going to post some lists, like lots of lists. And uh, I know it's kind of a thing to be secretive in Redemption, and I've definitely done that a lot, but... Uh, I think it's time to it's time to add that a little bit. And so I'm just sort of going to start posting some lists that I've built over the last like two years, uh, just because I think that if, whenever whenever we get that information out there, like these are some good lists, and like here's why, here's the strategy behind them. I think it'll really help. Uh, maybe some sort of like middling players who are like trying to get into the competitive sphere a little bit. Uh, it'll just really jumpstart their process so that they don't have to like waddle around for two or three years like I did, and then maybe if they aren't as like committed or they don't get as good of a community experience as I did coming up through Redemption, that maybe if they get competitive a little bit faster, they're more likely to stick around. So I think, I know there's been some questions early on about like what exactly this is targeted at. And I would say it's probably targeted to anyone who's on the forums and is trying to sort of keep up with what decks are good. Like I think we're just trying to get information out there, help you guys become a better player, and I mean, if you're already good, then you can basically just sit here and steal all of my lists and what I think is good, and you'll just know that, and that's fine, like, I don't care. I think that it's important to just get things out there and to get information out there, and sure, I think maybe at some point it'll potentially make tournaments a little bit harder because people might be playing lists that are like, fairly well tested comparatively to what they might normally do. But I think it's just important to get um, give players resources to research and to just really learn things about the game that maybe aren't ever explicitly said online. Uh, just give something, and also to be entertaining, because I think, I think me and Westy have a little bit of chemistry, and it can be quite entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> There's some sparks here, and it's pretty hilarious occasionally. Um, yeah. No, I agree um, with a lot of that. Like, um, as you mentioned earlier, like we were able to go all out on Pokemon largely because of the top cut, and it would be so nice to have that kind of a source for um, redemption, so people don't say, you know, I'm coming back. You know, what's good and stuff like that. That I mean, we get those posts every now and then, and um, it, it'd just be so easy to say. You know, oh, what is this, the deck I keep hearing about? It was like, oh, well, mm -hmm. um, you know, here's a, a video running down a deck list of it, or here's a sample game um, using it, and things like that, and really being able to um, help players out that are trying to get into the game but don't really know uh, where to start. Um, this isn't necessarily for, like, new players who are still, like, learning the game, yeah, but, I mean, we uh, might, the ones who I are think we might to try to post it, some sort of tutorial or something about what oh, redemption yeah, is, but that's definitely, I wouldn't say that that's the main focus of anything that we're going to be doing. Like, it's definitely geared towards people who are, I mean, maybe they, right. they don't know all the cards, but, like, they know they know some of the cards, they, especially some of the newer cards. Um, maybe, like, they have sort of a basic idea of deck building, but they just sort of need to take the next step from sort of, like, average player who's interested in being really competitive to, like, competitive player who's, like, a threat to... To players in tournaments, and you're scared that they might actually beat you, for sure. Maybe like people who are playing a little bit of a suboptimal list, uh, just like some little, maybe some fluff cards that if they posted their list online, people would be like, oh, like you don't really need to have that in the deck. It's not really helping yeah. you accomplish anything. Just yeah, I, you know. I heard of somebody who wanted to add like coming of salt into the deck, and it was like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Jay. I had to laugh at that. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. No, maybe not. <laughs> like, I think there's a difference between creative deck building and... No, no, no. I, I, yeah. I know. I just had to throw that, I had to that throw joke in. There. Yeah, we like... If anybody <laughs> makes it to the end of this video, it'll be him. So <laughs> That's true. 
I mean, yeah, we're probably getting pretty long now. Oh, well. Yeah, I got to go uh, do laundry. So. Do we have anything else? I don't think we have anything else to say anyway. No, I, I think that about wraps it up. Yep. Yeah, okay, we'll try so. Try to get a couple more games. I think we have a game filmed right now, but it's really bad, and we're going to film another one because I don't want to post that online. Especially because <laughs> I get mercilessly beaten again. Yeah. <laughs> it's and like 10 minutes of draw passing. Uh, turn three. Actually, it's technically, it's draw Simeon, rescue Jacob, pass. Sarah, by... Daniel, Michael, yeah, there's like a six, a wheel. It's, it's ugly. But uh, we'll try to get you guys great. some some more games up. Uh, yeah. And this is still a work in progress, so, like, yeah. you know, our first video is kind of just to um, jump jumpstart this and, and announce it to people. Um, we'll definitely be improving things um, as we go along, as we kind of start to um, figure some of the video recording out, things like that. So, um, hopefully, uh, yeah, it'll be getting better, and by nationals, we're going to be awesome, and hopefully be able to record games. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. And hopefully everyone will be playing my list so that I know what their decks are. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No, no. I think that about sums up what we are and what we're doing and why we're, why we're doing it, uh, why we're qualified to be talking about it. Like, I, think, I think that about does it. And uh, we'll see you guys at our next game of RTS. Hopefully I will be winning it. <laughs> Bye. You don't stand a chance. See ya. <laughs>